Hey, welcome back everyone. This CUBE's live coverage. I'm Sean Furrier, host of the CUBE here with Paul Gillen. Got a great guest coming up here talking about cloud security, all things going on in the cloud. Paul, great day. How you doing? How you holding up? Um, I'm about at the end of my, uh, the, the end of my <laughs> running on fumes. <laughs> let's bring it home. And we got day, another day coming day up. Day three, let's bring it home. <laughs> Come on, let's go. A lot of energy. A lot of energy on the floor and uh, certainly a lot of talk about security at, uh, at this conference. Uh, busy, busy market, lots of, lots of vendors. And uh, one of the more notable ones, Cohesity, uh, recently introduced a, a, a brand new suite, a brand new approach to security that combines data protection and, uh, and security and backup. Uh, with, with us to talk about that is Amit Nair, who is the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Cloud at Cohesity. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me, Paul and John. So, uh, tell us about DataHawk, your, your, new, uh, your new product. Yeah, just, just to get, set a little bit of perspective on Cohesity and how we think about DataHawk and security in general, is Cohesity is the leading solution for data security and management. And if you think about all the pillars that we provide in terms of solution around that data solutions, so we have data protection, data security, data access, data mobility, and data insights. So the focus for us over the last many months was really to make our data security solutions really strong. So generally when customers think about security, they think about starting with security at the perimeter, on the edge, they think about firewalls, network layer, and so on and so forth. But in the end, what they're really trying to protect is the data that aligns to what they're really trying to save, right? So DataHawk was formulated and built in order to help extend our existing solutions to provide additional security, layers of security, and also work with partners to enable doing that. Um, many months ago we released this product called Fortnox, which is our cyber vaulting solution, one that customers really love and use today. It's an air gap solution. It's an air gap right? solution yeah. with quorum capabilities and so on. Um, extremely liked by customers, very well adopted, and we extended that to provide lots more data classification capabilities and ransomware checks as well. So mal uh, malware checks in the product itself in terms of uh, what it is being backed up and is there malware in, in the backed up data and so on. Maybe well, we can talk about the evolution of ransomware because ransomware is getting a lot more sophisticated. It used to start at the endpoint and then penetrate into the network. Increasingly now we're seeing it uh, move into the backup right. uh, and actually corrupt backup files before moving into the production data. How is ransomware evolving? I mean, there's a ransomware attack that's happening right now as we speak, right? What is it, one in every 11 seconds or so on? Uh, and it's getting very, very sophisticated, and you're absolutely right. The target early on used to be the network or the firewall and so on and so forth. Now it is the backup. So you have to be very smart about how you protect your backup. And if you do get attacked, which a lot of CSORs are starting to realize, it's not about just preventing, but it's also what do you do if, you, if it does happen? How can you be resilient in, in the case of an attack? How can you recover if something happens? And that's where we come into play as well. What's some of the state of the art posture, security posture, and cyber resilient techniques? Can you share your observations on what are some of the current state of the art positions? I mean, besides they buy everything and they want everything, but we're looking at a cost reduction, slowdown in the recession. Yeah. Customers are going to look at belt tightening. We heard that from Adam Skolesky. What's the, has that changed or enhanced the posture and, and impact to the resiliency on the cyber side? Yeah, I think customers are getting really smart in terms of how they're adopting cloud. We saw a tremendous amount of growth from a cloud usage perspective, uh, I think over the last two years and through the pandemic. Cloud, now they're getting smart about how am I consuming that cloud, which is where the consumption is starting to slow down. But that does not mean they're not using cloud, right? And security and from a cloud perspective is very different from the old world, which was very static. You're in a completely dynamic environment now, so everybody talks about zero trust security. Uh, you have to have that level of no trust. Trust nothing, authenticate everything in terms of how you approach what connects to your network, what services connect to your network, and so on. Uh, and we follow the same approach. But we also believe that one solution cannot solve it, and which is why we had this announcement around our Security Advisory Council and Security Partnership and Alliances, where we are providing data to additional solutions or insights into other security solutions that will help the customer in the end. Um, you know, we talked about how some customers have anywhere between 50 to 70 vendors on their network for security. We, don't, we, want, we want to reduce that noise and that clutter, especially when it comes to cost and expenses, right? Awesome, I want to ask you a personal question, if you don't mind. You're new, relatively new to Cohesity, SVP, Senior Vice President, General Manager of the Cloud. I see AWS, the biggest cloud, there's other clouds. 
What attracted you to Cohesity? What was the key thing that attracted you to this company to take a leadership role as this next wave comes in uh, for, for cloud and, and security and what Cohesity's doing? Yeah, there are a couple of reasons. Number one and most important was the maturity of the product and the quality of the product. Uh, Mohit Aaron, who was our founder, uh, who, you know, known as a grandfather <laughs> or the father of hyper-converged networking. He's a he, legend. He's a legend, right? <laughs> Just and say he, it. <laughs> and he's built a phenomenal set of technologies that really helps customers. And that brings me to the second point, which is customers. We are a customer-obsessed company. And as I was talking to Mohit and Sanjay, who's our CEO, and Lynn, who's our CMO, and others in the company, it was very evident to me that the core DNA of the company is really helping our customers be successful. Those two things put together. And the third thing, really, I am very culture obsessed when it comes to how organizations are run. We have a very strong culture in terms of how we treat employees, how we build the right set of products, and how we go to market, right? Those three things put together helped me really make a decision. Obviously, the leadership team within Cohesity was top notch as well. So every one of them that I spoke to had that same core belief system. Yeah. Um, and that helped a lot. Sanjay, Sanjay's a good friend of the Cube. We've interviewed many times with the VMware, Paul. You know Sanjay's. He loves to get on cam. We hope to have him on tomorrow. Uh, if we can get him on the calendar. Yeah. But you know, Sanjay told me one time, I never missed a quarter. Yeah. In his career, SAP, VMware, he's wow. proud. Yeah. We'll see, Paul. We're, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm we better not miss the quarter. I'm going to hold them to that. <laughs> how's business? What do you? What's how's it it's healthy? Been, it's been great. Um, uh, we, we are seeing consistent demand for all of our products. As you can see, we continue to release new uh, products into the market that customers are asking for. We're listening to what customers really want. Our roadmap is really based on two things: customer demand and market, and where the market is growing. We have to stay on top of how the market is evolving based on the new challenges that customers are facing. Right, so markets, we're doing really good. The company continues to grow, and uh, Sanjay has been <laughs> fantastic in terms of driving that leadership. Yeah, he's, he's a good driver, he, and he's, again, he's missed the court for a reason, he's disciplined. <laughs> Very disciplined. Another recent initi initiative, uh, Cohesities, is the Data Security Alliance. You put together a group of about a dozen yeah. uh, security companies. Getting security companies to work with each other is always a challenge. Uh, what, how did you convince them to join with you? Well, one, we aligned on a mission. I mean, in the end, all the partners that we are talking about, they all care about what customers want, and we talked earlier about having that, you know, what is that single pane of glass when it comes to security? Is there one? No, probably not, but if you can reduce the chatter and the noise amongst all these companies, that helps. The other thing is they also understood our mission was really around the security around data. Um, we talked earlier about how security used to be very parameter centric, but what you're really trying to save and secure is your data, which is your queen bee. And so, it, a couple of months ago at our uh, customer advisory council, I talked about moving and shifting the focus of security to be very data centric. And what we do in this partnership and alliances, it's a true integration, so there's a lot of engineering work that goes in, uh, is us providing insights around the data to the security partners who can then leverage that to help customers be protected early on. Conversely, they can provide insights into an attack that's emanating possibly to let us know that there's something happening so we can lock up the data. So it's a bi-directional symbiotic relationship between these partners. Uh, and they all believe in that common cause of uh, making sure the customers get protected. As we talked about earlier, lots of cyber attacks happening even as we speak. If we can collectively do something good in terms of making customers secure and successful, let's do it. So what, what will result from this alliance other than a press release? Uh, customers will be successful, hopefully uh, not just protect customers from ransomware attacks, but also respond and recover if something does ha happen. We also announce our security council, uh, led by Kevin Mandy, and, and then we have some other big security advisors in that council as well. Um, and that's been very helpful. So it's not just about the product itself, but it's also the collective experience of all these folks who can help and advise and coach uh, CISOs and other organizations on what are the best practices? What are the things you're not really considering? What is the vision for you from an architecture standpoint? How are security threats uh, starting to get more and more mature and how can you account for that? How can you reduce cost, to your point, right? How can you reduce cost when it comes to managing yeah. all these security so solutions? There's no, in, there's no industry where, where we're it's more important for vendors to work together than in this one. Absolutely, I mean, especially for security, I don't think there's a one size fits all solution. Uh, so we have to work together, right? What's your state of the union? You were at HashiCorp before you came here. 
Uh, you've been in the industry for a while, you've seen a few cycles of innovation. Yeah. We're in a really weird time right now because AWS wasn't really as powerful in 20, 2008 when the last recession was, was, more, was hard too. They weren't really that big then. Now they're a big part of the economic equation. So, agility means fast speed. Can they help us get out of the pandemic? Customers are going to tighten their belts. Yeah. Is, is there going to be a pullback? Is there tech spending? All these questions are looming. What are your customers seeing? What do you think is going to happen, given the history? Because I don't see the building stopping. I think you'll see more cloud, more savings. Yeah. So is there fine-tuning solutions? What are, what are customers thinking right now? I mean, if you think back to the last recession, or last major one, 2009, that's really about the time when you saw customers thinking about that whole digital transformation because they started understanding that the way to connect with customers is through a digital engagement, right? Uh, now, as we've gone through a 10, 15 year period where there has been a lot of digital transformation, there's been a lot of investment in the cloud, cloud is no longer seen with suspicion, uh, now it's about getting smart on how to use it, how to build the right applications. Are there the right set of applications that need to stay in the cloud and there might be others that need to stay on-prem, right? Um, I, I've talked to customers and CIOs who've mentioned to me in the past that they would go 100% in the cloud and six months later they come back and they're like, nope, you're not going 100% <laughs> in the cloud, maybe it's 10% or 15%. So they're moving, so what's your plan? You're the GM, you're in charge, you've got to take that next hill, is it a tailwind, headwind? You got to navigate <laughs> the, the waters here, so to speak, mixed metaphors, but, yeah. but for the most part, you got a business opportunity. Absolutely. What's the outlook look like? What's, the, what's your vision? What's the plan? Yeah, when it comes to cloud, there are certain things that are a common denominator, right? One is how do you enable not just applications that are completely on cloud, but also that's on, on prem. So for us, that hybrid movement is extremely important but to create a single U seamless UI and experience from an end customer perspective. So for me, maintaining that, and Mohit and team, the R&D team at Cohesity have done a phenomenal job around that. For me, it's to maintain that, and then build additional workloads that make sense from a customer standpoint. Uh, there's a lot of investment customers are making. We also have to make sure that they're utilized correctly, and they're stored, backed up, data recovered uh, in a way that makes sense for them, and then if things do go south in terms of attacks or other issues, yeah. how can we help them get back up to speed and make sure their business does not uh, suffer, right? Yeah. So all of those combined, uh, I think from a cloud perspective, it's the agility, the scalability, and the, the speed and swiftness that we can work with. Well, it sounds like he's ready for the Instagram Reel Challenge, our new format on theCUBE. <laughs> We're going to do a little segment where you can deliver a YouTube short, Instagram Reel, TikTok, our Cube, Cube Gym, more of a thought leadership sound bite for 30 seconds yeah. around your view of why, why is cloud important right now? What's going on at this event that people should pay attention to? What's Cohesity doing? If you can put together a reel, a sizzle reel, or a thought leadership statement, yeah. what would that be? It would be that cloud is important for any business to be successful, and that's a given right now. I mean, I, digital transformation is an overused term, but the reality is it's here to stay and it is the reason why everybody has a mobile phone. Half the people walking on the floor right now is looking at their phone and walking around, and that's your engagement method. So if you don't transform yourself to be able to connect with your end user, your customer, you will not be successful. And Cohesity can help you by making sure that all of that data that you have, everything that you need in order to be successful to drive that engagement with your customer is secure, it's backed up. No matter what, we will get you back up and running and you will be successful. And we are in the success journey with you. And Myth there, Senior Vice President, General Manager, Cozy the Cloud. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. For Paul Gillen, my co-host, I'm John Furrier, here live on the floor, wrapping up day two. A few more segments, stay with us. We've got a lot of action coming. We'll be right back with more after the short break. The Cube, the leader in tech coverage.